Finally, the Supreme Court is convening today without a full bench and is preparing for a session full of cases with heavy impacts. One America's Christina Howitson has more. Despite the bench lacking all nine justices, the Supreme Court will proceed with its 2020 session. Through virtual conference, the eight remaining justices will hear arguments, including debate on several major cases. The free exercise clause will be under scrutiny when the court meets on November 4th to discuss Fulton v. City of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and whether religious organizations, in this case a Catholic foster care group, can refuse to provide services that violate their religious beliefs. Then, just days after Election Day, the court will hear arguments for California v. Texas, the case that will decide the future of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. While the Court of Eight leans conservative by a 5-3 margin, Chief Justice John Roberts famously defected from the conservatives on the court, voting for the Affordable Care Act in 2012. The court today rules that Congress does not have the power under the Commerce Clause to enact the individual mandate. The court goes on to rule that Congress does have such power under the Taxing Clause. Finally, the court rules that the expansion of Medicaid in the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional to the extent it allows the federal government to take away a state's Medicaid funds if the state does not adopt the expansion. Still, more disputes have yet to be scheduled, with the Mueller probe and voting laws in Arizona on the docket without confirmed dates. 20 years after the court, then led by conservative powerhouse Chief Justice William Rehnquist, decided the presidential election in favor of then-Texas Governor George W. Bush, the Roberts Court may be asked to do so again. While the Rehnquist court was very clear their decision would not set precedent, still Democrat lawmakers worry a conservative lean on the bench, furthered by the possible confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett, could result in an advantage for President Trump. One of the things I want to ask her is will she recuse herself? Because if she does not, in terms of any election uh, issues that come before us, because if she does not recuse herself, I fear that the court will be further delegitimized. Meanwhile, Republicans contend it is vital to have a full bench before the election to ensure any issue brought before the court will result in a clear vote and not a possible 4-4 tie. Further, Senator Ted Cruz adds that in the event the court is called in to decide any part of the race, an incomplete court could delegitimize the court as an institution safeguarding American democracy. This election is a close contested election. Uh, Joe Biden has already stated that if he doesn't win, he intends to contest the legitimacy of the election. If we see multiple cases challenging the election, if the court were to have only eight justices, it could divide 4-4, and under the Constitution, a 4-4 court can't decide anything. We could face conflicting Court of Appeals judgments simultaneously. The session will begin with a case involving the First Amendment protections of federal judges in Kearney v. Adams and a dispute over natural resources in Texas v. New Mexico, with the public able to listen in on oral arguments as they are streamed live. Christina Howitson, One America News. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.